Hey guys, Haz here at Shield Canine. Today we are gonna to talk about picking a dog to protect you and to protect your family. How do we select protection dogs? People are always asking me this question. So today I'm gonna to tell you and I'm also gonna show you. Okay guys, so one of the qualities that I look for in a dog that I select for protection work. And this is probably the most important quality is stability of temperament. I am not looking for fearful or nervy dogs. So a dog that's nervous about the environment, a dog that's nervous about social interactions, a dog that has general anxiety, they're not very good protection dogs. Their fear will always get in the way of them being able to do their job properly. So stability is very important. Now, I know you're probably asking at this point, how do I see if a dog is stable? Obviously, what we're going to expect from a puppy versus an adult are two very different things. Puppies have a lot more to go. They have a lot more to mature and you're not going to see the same picture as you would with a fully mature dog or even with a young adult dog. I wanna see an, a social open puppy. Now the puppy doesn't need to really seek social interaction, but I don't like seeing dogs that are super nervous about everyone new that they see. Now puppies are often, especially if they're very inexperienced, they can get scared or sketched out by different things if they haven't seen it before. I'm looking to see the recovery of the puppy. Does the puppy recover? Does the puppy come out of his shell after a little bit of exposure? If he does, that's a very good sign. Now, if he doesn't, bad sign, generally a big red flag. Okay guys, so the next thing I look for in puppies is the bloodline. Obviously, you're not gonna be able to see all the dog that you're gonna have to work with when the dog's six, eight, even 16 weeks, right? A lot of people are trying to tell a lot from looking at a puppy. But what will tell me a lot about what a puppy could be or will be are the bloodline. So it's really, really important that you select a dog A from the right breed and B from the right bloodline. So don't be one of these people that tries to get a square peg in a round hole. You want a Husky? Well, then you don't want a protection dog. You want a Lab? Well, you don't want a protection dog. If you want a dog that is for protection work or for bite sports or something like that, you buy a dog that is successful in that category. With puppies, you have to understand, even from the best bloodlines, you are rolling the dice because there's nothing that's for sure. I've seen top tier bloodlines produce duds and I've seen mediocre to low quality bloodlines produce superstars. A lot of people say, oh, okay, well, that's an exception to the rule. So let me then roll the dice and, and, and hope I get the exception. That's not a way that you make decisions if you're someone that's looking for a reasonable level of success. So you pick from the right bloodlines, bloodlines that have a history of doing work. I don't care about titles. Oh, my dog has a Schutzen 3. All the show lines in Germany have Schutzen titles. Those dogs are not dogs for protection work in the vast majority of cases. A working title alone doesn't mean that. You buy dogs from working lines. The parents, the grandparents, the grandparents, grandparents all worked in the task that you're looking for the dog to be able to perform. Because I can look at a six week to eight week old puppy and I could say, maybe he's showing some good things or maybe he's not showing all the things I want to see, but I can look at the bloodlines and say, well, I might see a very different dog in six months. So generally for progression, just so you guys know, six to eight weeks, you're gonna see a certain thing. 16 weeks to maybe 25 weeks, you're gonna see something else. Now the dog gets to about a year, you're gonna see something else. When the dog gets to 18 months to two years, you're gonna see all that you've got to see at that point. The other thing that I look for is drive. If I wanna do bite work with a dog, I need this thing called prey drive. The dog needs to want to pursue objects and engage with those objects obviously we'll then transfer that over to a human being under certain contexts. For puppies, obviously you're not gonna see that much, especially with certain breeds when they're really young, right? I know everybody's seen the videos of the Malwas hanging off somebody when they're six weeks old, but your average working breed, like your German Shepherd or your Doberman even, you're not gonna see these pictures when they're that young. What you wanna see though is a progression where the drive continues to improve, improve, improve. People ask me, how do I make my dog have more drive? Well, there are things that you can do to bring out the drive, but you can't actually make more of it. It's either there or it's not. So you've got young adults. So I tend to buy dogs between the ages of 10 months and two years, sometimes a little younger, sometimes a little older. At that point, when I'm looking at a dog, I'm looking with a much more critical eye. I don't care what the bloodlines are. The dog is there in front of me and I'm gonna be able to see a lot. Again, number one, stability of temperament. I wanna see a dog that enters new environments without showing excessive nervousness or fear. I wanna see a dog that hasn't seen something in the environment and it sketches him out, but I wanna see that he can overcome it and come through it and not 
act nervous every single time he's exposed to it. I don't mind if I see a dog that's a little bit like, yeah, I don't like strange people. I don't really love them, but I don't want to see that excessive nervous fear regression that a lot of people mistake and say, my dog's protective. No, your dog's not protective. Your dog's terrified and he's trying to drive the boogeyman away before in his mind, the boogeyman gets him. Don't confuse that with dogs that are a little bit reactive. Right? You see this a lot in the German Shepherds and in the Mastiffs. These dogs grow up and the owners don't really give the dog a lot of feedback and the dog learns to be reactive to things in the environment. Maybe they feel a little bit insecure about them, but they also have a lot of arousal that they're generating towards those things. And they're getting kind of a little kick out of it. It's like, yeah, I feel a little funny about that dog, but when I go, wah, he does something back at me, or maybe the owner takes that dog away, and now he's getting satisfaction out of that. Of course, any reactivity needs to be dealt with, but I see a lot of young, good dogs showing reactivity because the owners just haven't taught them to not be reactive. Once you do that, they generally go into a state of social neutrality and they have no problem working. The other thing I'm looking for in a grown dog is drive. If I don't see drive now, I'm probably not gonna see a lot of it later. I'm gonna show you guys how I evaluate drive. I'm gonna run some tests with the dogs in this building to kind of see how we would look at their stability, so on and so forth. The dogs that we're gonna show you in this video, we got three dogs. We got a German Shepherd puppy, we got a young adult Doberman, and we've got a two-year-old female bully. You guys are gonna see kind of three very different types of dog and what each dog brings to the table, maybe what each dog lacks. Okay guys, so this is Max. Max is a German Shepherd puppy from Working Lines, in case you couldn't tell, he's a sable color. And Max is a dog that we actually purchased to be in our protection dog program. Uh, he's about 16 weeks old, and as you can see, he's a very big dog. Um, and he's still very much a baby. So we're gonna see what he has to offer. Um, I have never actually done any protection work with Max. So you guys are literally gonna get the raw deal. All he's had is some obedience training. You know, he's had some basic socialization like we do with all our puppies. We're not in a big rush to do protection work with little puppies. A lot of people think that you should. Um, it's definitely not something that we find is necessary. Usually we let their teeth come in before we start protection work. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And at this point, when I'm working the puppy, I'm not looking for where is he biting it and how is he biting it. I'm looking for the fact that he, A, wants to chase it, which shows that he has drive, and B, that he's willing to try to bite it. He obviously has no clue how to bite. He doesn't even have um, his teeth yet. He's in the middle of losing his teeth and gaining new teeth. But you can see a couple of things already. He wants to chase it. He has a nice calm grip and he likes to possess it. These are all good signs. Oh. Good, hold him back. Yes, yes. Oh, oh, oh. Super puppy, and you can see there, the grip's very nice. He was willing to take it from my hand. You can see he's not a dog who's crazy, but he has the drive. He has a nice calm behavior, but he also has that drive that we're looking for. And you can see he's very calm in the work. So he's the perfect behavior that we're looking for in the protection work. He's very stable, he's very social. I mean, you guys are just gonna have to take my word for it because obviously he knows everybody here, but you know, he's not excessively worried about anything. He just has a very nice calm demeanor. So this for us is ideally what we're looking for when we select a dog for protection work. Because again, this dog's gonna be living with a family. And here you can see the dog's willing to engage with me. He doesn't really know me, but you see there, he's willing to hold on. I'm not gonna make too much pressure. Oh, and you can see there he countered into the grip. Oh, but he has a really nice possession. That's exactly what we're looking for. He wants to chase it, he wants to grab it, and he wants to hold it, and he's willing to continue to do that. Whoa, so there, it popped out of his mouth. What's his default? So obviously we know Max's bloodline. We wouldn't have bought him if he didn't have a good bloodline. I know his parents and his grandparents. I like them all and I like his pedigree very much. And Max is exactly what we're looking for in our protection dog program for a puppy. Good family dog, but you can see he's gonna be big. He's gonna be imposing. He's gonna have all the quality that we look for in the drive. He's gonna have a nice grip and he's gonna be a dog that has no problem achieving any level of protection work. Pressure, pressure. Good, pressure, and release. Good, praise him. And again, pressure. Pressure, and release. Good boy, good. And again, pressure. 
Good. Keep going. And release. Good boy. Get his head out of there. Don't let him put his head in there. Yeah. I intentionally bought those stairs because I know they fuck with dogs, right? Like they really mess with dogs' heads because of the big openings. A lot of dogs really struggle with those types of stairs. That's why I put those stairs there. So I have a place that I can work open stairs with the dogs. Come here, Max. Come here. Come here. Up, 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 up. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Up, up. Come on. Come on. Wow. Good job. Very nice. So what we're looking for, guys, is like even in a dark room, slippery floors, what's the dog's default? Obviously, a protection dog isn't a police dog. They don't have to be 100% environmentally sure. They can have a little environmental bobble here and there, but I'm looking generally at the dog's behavior. What is he? Is he always scared or is he able to overcome, you know, things that make him sketchy or is he generally open? What are we seeing here? If I see constant fear all the time, it's a big red flag. If he's afraid of that stuff, he's probably gonna be afraid of other things. So what I'm looking to see is like, if something unexpected happens, you know, what's the dog's default? Is the dog gonna run, you know? Is the dog gonna... Yeah, you know, like, is he staying? You can see there, I dropped the chair. It's making some noise. I don't wanna see complete flight behavior. I don't mind if he hesitates. I just wanna see a dog that stays in the game, so to speak. He doesn't have a complete breakdown because there's noise or something like that. Okay guys, so the next dog we have up is Blue. Blue is a female bully. Now, I wanted to bring Blue out just to show you guys an example of a dog that we would think would be not particularly ideal as a protection dog. So we're gonna look at Blue and, and we're gonna see what we see. I mean, she's a sweet girl, but uh, maybe not protection dog material, but you guys can see for yourselves. Oh, shush. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Good. I feel kind of bad, but she'll survive. As you can see there, there's not much prey drive there. I'm sure when she's perfectly fine and happy, she's willing to play with toys. But you can see there, when I started acting just a little bit funny, right away it tripped that defense mechanism. She immediately perceived me as a big threat and her reaction to a threat is to bluster and back up. You could see that, woo, 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 right? This is a common behavior seen in very defensive dogs. Now you can see with Blue, that if I did a little work with Blue, let's say I put maybe four or five sessions into Blue, I could get her forward on the leash, I could get her making a big scene, and I could probably get her to kind of half-ass bite something, but it's certainly not a dog that I would say, oh yeah, this dog will protect you, right? Maybe we can make her into a deterrent dog with some work. She's definitely not the type of dog we're looking for as a protection dog. We want a dog that's more forward. We want a dog that's more active. Um, we want a dog that's more confident and stable. And you can see she has a very thin threshold. It didn't take me much. All I did was, hey, and she went, woo, woo, woo. And you guys could see with the camera too, like right away when uh, Dan brought the camera, woo, 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 she was right away tripped into that mode. So obviously, you know, the handler needs to manage her properly when she's out and about. And you can see that when she perceives a threat, her reaction is to back up and to make noise. It's not to come forward and engage with the threat. And that's a default behavior. Can you make it better with some training? Yes. Would you say that this dog's gonna be a high quality protection dog? No. And that's the reality. When you're selecting dogs for the program, those types of dogs, unfortunately, are not what we're looking for. When I was kicking the prey around, a dog that had a ton of prey drive, even if they felt a little funny about me, they'd be able to come through that funny feeling and get into the prey, um, just because I was making a ton of prey movements back and forth. But you could see that it was very hard for her to make that transition. I really pushed her a couple times and made a ton of prey arousal and she kind of pursued me a little bit, but there just wasn't that full transition there. And it's just because again, not an ideal dog for that type of work. Hey, yeah. <laughs> okay, done. So next up we're guys, we're gonna have our European working Doberman. This is uh, Victor. Victor is 10 months old. We're gonna do a little work with him and we're gonna kind of see where he's at and we're gonna talk about what's good there and maybe what's not good. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Woo, Baba. Good. Ooh. Good, so right away, you can see that he has good prey. He doesn't really have much in the way of defense yet. No one's really opened that side of him yet. And I've seen this a lot in Dobermans. If no one really opens that side, and the dog's generally social now, obviously, oh, obviously we know, oh, 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 obviously we know Victor. So we know he's social and he's a happy guy. He's also, 
Why is he young? Now here you can see a little bit, he's getting, he's taking it a little bit seriously. Boy, hey, oh, you can see there he's got drive. One thing I find with a lot of young Dobermans is if they're good, once you are able to open the defensive side of the dog and teach them to get off the prey a little bit and get more involved in the real fight, that can really make them into a different kind of dog. Now, they're never gonna be a herder. I know a lot of people are always like, I want my Doberman to do all the things that Malwas are gonna do. Now, generally, they're not that level of dog. What I find is if you can get a good one, like obviously Victor, you can see he's got all the prey drive there. He doesn't really know what to do with his defense yet. So once we open the defense on the dog and we teach him how to really fight a man i think he's going to be a fantastic dog now a lot of people that are unscrupulous when they sell these dogs what they'll do is keep the dog in prey and let the dog play prey games with the sleeve or something like that and it looks good to people that don't know what they're looking at but when we teach the dogs in our program is yeah there's prey yeah there's opportunities to bite but at the end of the day you are fighting a man and you need to be able to do that in order to be good at your job of actually protecting your family your loved ones property whatever it is that the dog's supposed to protect for victor i see very good prey you can see he has a very natural grip he has good possession he just needs to work on on that reactive side and it's very normal for young dogs and especially Doberman if no one's opened that side of the dog it's not there now I don't like to see too much of that too young so if I see a dog and it's young and it's just being super defensive and you know the teeth and it's showing like all this crazy behavior for me I know there's too much nerves there right there's too much nerves and the nerves are the first thing that come to the dog's mind and yeah a lot of people say oh wow look he's so crazy his teeth are out and all that stuff and he's only eight months old it's for me it's not a good sign and there's too much nerves in the dog and that's a dog that maybe he can put on a good show but when the going gets tough he's gonna get going and you can see right here he's willing to combat with me over the sleep i oh good boy good boy there's a little hackle there people get so obsessed with what you're using in protection work and they think that that means something i've seen people use a sleeve on a complete pussy of a dog and i can use this with a dog and i can open up his nerves i can make him believe that he is fighting right i can create that approximate emotion in the dog regardless of what equipment i'm using so that it really doesn't matter so it's not really about equipment it's really about what the decoy is able to do and what the decoys decoy is able to bring out in the dog right just like when you're sparring those of you that know anything about you know martial arts or anything like that there's guys that hold the pads when you're sparring and they're no threat to you and then there's guys that can beat you up with those pads so even though they're focus mitts and they're holding them they can really crack you really good and they can make you feel like you're in a fight for your life right it's the same thing when you're doing protection work right I, again i'm digress i digress from talking about what we should be talking about which is selection just go up slow now encourage him a little bit pressure forward and keep pulling don't let him back up until it's yeah release good pull and release good pull and release praise him and again pull pull good and you can see now he's willing to do it very minimal help now he's getting ahead of the handler a little bit that's what we want to see we want to see the dog that's able to overcome obstacles quickly overcome things that make him afraid quickly the idea that you're going to have a dog that's never going to be afraid of anything is asinine most dogs do have some fear like i've certainly had some protection dogs in my program that were literally afraid of nothing but most dogs do have some level of fear i want to see how a dog deals with a little bit of insecurity a little bit of fear again going into a dark room what's the dog's behavior a lot of dogs don't like going into dark rooms especially when they're a little smaller you can see he's willing to go with the handler that's what we want to see you can bring him out good not too much reaction to the noise there curiosity nothing else that's good yeah yeah good boy so you can see he's actually not excessively worried about someone being close you know um he has a nice kind of neutral behavior i think as he gets older for sure he's going to be a little bit uh, more aloof with people he doesn't know but you can see he has plenty of drive and man he bites really really hard and he's going to be a big beautiful dog when he's full grown so we're really excited to have Victor in the program. He's the first Doberman we've had in our program. I've trained a lot of Dobermans, but I said, you know, I had a lot of clients. They all wanted Dobermans. So I said, all right, I'm gonna get a Doberman because it's so important to me that we get one with good health and good working ability. I went to Europe and I found someone there that has access to good Dobermans and uh, Victor's all health tested. He's a young dog, but he's gonna be a fantastic dog. He's gonna be a big, blocky, strong dog. So we really look forward to having him in the program. 
Guys, it's really important when you're training a dog to protect you and to protect your family, we can't play games with this type of stuff. We need to make the training as realistic as possible. And there are only certain types of dogs that can handle that training. The vast majority of dogs, even dogs from good bloodlines, cannot handle that level of training, just like the vast majority of people can't be in the UFC and, and, and can't fight at any kind of real level. So it's really important when we select these dogs that we're selecting the right stock, the right bloodline, and also the right individuals for this job. Real protection training is not a joke. Yes, you can do it recreationally and it's super fun and we have a lot of handlers that do it. But at the end of the day, if you want a dog that's really gonna do the job, you need to select the right dog.